All right. Hello, everybody. It is uh, January 23rd today. So we're almost through the end of January. All right. So anyway, um, I've got some cool stuff to talk about here. But as always, I want to open it up if anybody's got any questions or anything you want me to address specifically. This is the this is definitely the call for that. So uh, if you guys do, if I'm like in the middle of something, there's a uh, there's a thing in here to raise your hand, or you can just unmute. I'll see that you're unmuted, and uh, then I can I can call on you. So uh, anyway, um, lots of lots of cool stuff. I'm getting asked to speak a lot more often now, so that's. Uh, that's getting me back out on the on the circuit and a lot more. We have a lot of new people coming in. Um, another thing, there's going to be a, a good opportunity if you have any connections to the Spanish market. If you guys have any any Spanish connections that need marketing assistance, we're in the process right now of converting ACT into Spanish. And I've got a couple of people that are going to support that and do the calls. And I actually believe, believe it or not, I think that the Spanish market is going to be bigger than the English market, not because it's bigger in size, just because it's blue water. You know, I've talked about this blue water concept before, and blue water is the opposite of red water, which is bloody water. <laughs> when you're swimming with competitors and you're, you know, the sharks are in the water, you're, you're basically in what I consider red water. And uh, that's not, uh, not ideal for business. Uh, anyway, that's, uh, that's something that's uh, coming up. So affiliate opportunities. There's going to be a lot of affiliate opportunity for uh, for getting in on that. If you guys want to get in on that, also any of you that have groups or followings or connectors to people in the SEO world, the SitePop affiliate program is uh, is working really good. Okay, Roy says. Okay, Roy, you you in. Your question here is about login not working and not getting emails to reset. Is that from the, we have two logins. In SitePop, we have the training login, which is our Kartra setup. That's where we do our sales and our support and everything through Kartra. And then we actually have the backend login that is for the, the actual software itself. That's where the control panel is to run the SitePop software. Um, a couple of reasons why you might have issues with that. Our software is running on two separate servers. Kartra is one server. That's a cloud-based server. And if they get a hard bounce, this is something I just found out recently. If they get a hard bounce, what happens is they basically block the account from getting any kind of email communication. Like they won't allow me to send out to accounts that have been blocked. There's a lot of different reasons why they get blocked, but uh, login is, or rather, you know, from, from blocking them is hard bounces. And if you're on any kind of list, Okay, so it says it, this is to manage the projects. If you want, I can, I'm going to make a note here and I'm going to email you. I'll go in and reset your password for you. Chances are, if it's in the back end software, uh, the server that we have the back end software on, a lot of times it can't get email out to uh, some of the free accounts like Yahoo email addresses. If you guys are using, you know, the, the free kind of throwaway email addresses, those get blocked a lot from service providers. So Gmail is usually pretty good. I've never seen a problem with Gmail addresses, but I have seen a lot of problem with Yahoo addresses. So, and Hotmail, especially Hotmail stuff. A lot of the internet service providers, um, 
they they look at those emails as throwaway emails. So if you're using a domain email, that shouldn't really get blocked. So anyway, what I'll do, I'll go in and, and look at that for you when we're done with the call. And I'll reset your password and I'll send it to you from my email address. So that way it should for sure get through to you. And then you can get logged in there. And if you want to change your password once you're logged in, you can do that. At no problem. I'll just set a generic password for you on that. So uh, cool. And any, anybody else, you know, if you ever have trouble logging in, we've got our support system. Uh, you can contact us through there or you can jump on the call here. This call is available for anything that you need support with. So anything from passwords to things most of the other people on the call won't even recognize. <laughs> so it's, it's truly open to anything. And again, if you guys have any questions or anything, feel free to, uh, to either do the, the hand raise thing or unmute and, uh, or ask your question in the chat box. So we're, we have all, all modality to get your questions answered here. Uh, another thing, I just want to reiterate this. When on this call, we talk about stuff all over the board. There's, uh, there's people on the call that are very advanced. There's people on the call that this is the first time on the call. So no problem. John, go ahead. You got your hand raised there. I'll unmute you. Um, yeah, John, look, I guess I'm in a bit of a quandary at the moment. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, that sounds, sounds weird, I know. My, my business model, basically, I just have a small number of uh, SEO clients, which I charge anywhere from 500 to 1500 a month. Okay. I don't, I don't need to have an email list or build a list of thousands of people. Um, <laughs> Mainly, I get inquiries and I just go and chat with them and I, my conversion rate is pretty high, probably three out of four, I suppose. Okay. Once, I get to that, once I get to that stage, do I really need Kartra for what I'm doing? I don't need most of the things that Kartra does. I can't see myself needing. Um, the Act system with you is very invaluable um, in the respect that it, has um, made me, I've been doing this for 20, 20 years or more, and it's made me sort of remember a lot of things I've, <laughs> I should be, should be doing, yeah. and I, I haven't been doing, and it's set me on a bit of a new course. So I, I think the, 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 uh, the ACT thing is brilliant, but I'm just, do I need Carter at the moment? I mean, if I was running it, if I wanted to, I may develop an affiliate thing or something like that, or some sort of passive income stream in the future where that would do all the things that Kartra does would be valuable. Do I need to have Kartra to be part of ACT or not? Would no, you know? no, no. There, there's, there's absolutely no requirement for Kartra at all. Uh -huh. okay. Car yeah. Kartra, Kartra really is just a business system. Um, what I've found, I really like it because it's everything in one box. It's like mm -hmm. all the stuff mm -hmm. that I need and use in one convenient place but it's it's by no means a requirement at all okay. you can do everything we talk about in act there's multiple different ways that you could do that with or without Kartra. right okay that's fine and also look i've got a compliment on the upgrade for uh for the marketing assistant, it, uh, it now shows uh, IP numbers in real time. I can see what my, my clients are doing because I'm my as I said, my business model is sort of I get a client pay <laughs> two phones, I keep one here as I build up my my number of phones in the office, and plus they get one. And uh, um, yeah, it's uh, it's been it's been quite a challenge really to keep that platform up to speed because. You know, we're we're supporting Windows, Mac, and Android, and they keep, you know, the changes on those platforms are, are continuous. So it's... Yeah, uh, yeah. Anyway, good job well done. You can pass it on to Chris and his team. But, but anyway, thanks very much for answering that question about the uh, ACT versus Kartra. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Kartra is great if you're, if you're running marketing campaigns or you're trying to build a list and really communicate with the list. Um, as far as like, like my use of Kartra, when I first saw it, I was like, it just like took a ton of bricks off my shoulders because I was trying to do all that stuff using a bunch of pieces, patching them together, 
And in the past, you know, I had tried Infusionsoft and it was just a nightmare. I had tried ClickFunnels and at the time ClickFunnels was the best option, but it was still a mess. You had to connect all this different stuff and, and uh, you know, you were piece patching everything together and then one person had changed their stuff and then, you know, all hell would break loose. <laughs> so, so when Kartra came out, I slowly started shifting things into it because I was like, you know, I had everything in membership sites and, you know, I had 20 years of stuff that I had built along the way and all these different programs. So I was kind of hesitant to move stuff, but boy, once I started moving it, how smooth everything went, I, I just, I don't know what I would do without it, quite honestly, at this point. But, uh, but it definitely is not a requirement. Some people have other different shopping carts, like um, some people are in Shopify, uh, some people have Kajabi, you know, there's, there's all kinds of other stuff. Kajabi and Kartra are very similar. I know the president of Kajabi. I knew him before he was involved with Kajabi. Uh, the same guys that built Kartra actually built Kajabi. It was Andy Jenkins and, you know, his team, and then they moved on, and then they came back and they created Kartra. And I had a recent conversation with the president of Kartra, and basically my, my question was, should I be pushing people to Kajabi versus Kartra? And we kind of got into it, got into the specifics. And he said, Kajabi is a little more simple interface. So there's a lot of things that, that are a little less complex, but he said, on the other hand, he said, Kajabi can't hold a candle to the advanced automation in Kartra. And those advanced automations is what really makes your life easy. You know, you can, you can set up campaigns that go years into the future and the campaigns can be based on the actions taken by the user. So I know that's kind of a generic statement, but when you really get your head wrapped around what that can mean for marketing, that is a game changer that increases your your conversions and your income long term like in crazy amounts and it also decreases your personal involvement with doing the marketing once you get it set up right it's like you know you set up this long sequence that goes out into the future and you know based on if they do this then they then we do that all of that kind of stuff like let's say somebody is on a membership site and they're paying you and they're paying month after month after month. And then all of a sudden, for some reason, they drop out. Kartra could detect that and send them a follow-up sequence because they dropped out. It could ask them, you know, what was the reason? Was the price too high? It could offer them a discount, try and get them back in. It could also, because they dropped out of one thing, maybe that ran its cycle. They're at the end of their timeline and they're on a new timeline. Maybe it could offer them, a, a, you know, an affiliate product for their next logical step. There's a ton of different things. When you get into funnels, funnels can look really, uh, really daunting, uh, but they're not. It's just a real simple thing of if this, then that. That's what you have to think about. And all you have to do is really think about how you would deal with it if you only had one customer. If you just had one customer and your life depended on them, your whole livelihood depended on that customer, how would you treat them? What would you do when they did this? What would you do as far as that? You know, if they, if they said, yeah, I want to cancel, would you just, you know, let it be? Or would you maybe want to talk to them? Would you maybe want to find out what the problem was or if there, if you were missing something or if you had something else that would fill the gap and make them happy? What you would do in the real world is what you, you can put into something like Kartra and get with those advanced automations and have that process run on every customer you ever drop in the pipeline. That's a game changer. That's like if you had, you know, a hundred customers or, or a thousand customers, think about this. If you had a thousand customers and you had to do all of those personal interactions 
it would kill you. You it would burn you out. You know, you would be nothing. It all day you would constantly be churning, you know, and managing your customers. When if all you have to do is figure out what's the path, what do I do over and over and over, put that into a sequence, put that into some advanced automations in Kartra, and let Kartra automate what you do, automate that ideal customer experience. Back like 20 years ago, when auto responders first came out, uh, I was not, I was doing just strictly work in the commercial world. And I would tell my commercial clients, you know, you have to have an autoresponder. And here's how you want to think about it. Think about if, and I told them the same thing. I said, if this was your last customer, how would you treat them? You would probably give them a spectacular experience. So do that. The next customer through the gates, do that, document it. Every time you send them something, put it into the autoresponder so everyone gets it. You know, write it in a way that it's, it can be personalized where the next person's name can be dropped in and, and put it in an auto response. So an auto responder rather. So that the next person that comes in and asks for information, you know, they're a prospect, give them the same experience, give them a spectacular user experience. Make it all about them, make it all about their needs. You know, in, in ACT, we talk about the, the process, you know, the sales process. And it's, I call it a sales vehicle. It's the vehicle to take someone from completely unaware, grab their attention, make them aware, and, and educate them through the process of why they need your product, what it's going to do for them, create the demand and desire for it, um, eliminate objections, and make an offer. It's all about that sequence. That sequence takes multiple touches, multiple conversations, whether they're in text, email, video, on the phone, whatever it is, those all need to take place. Now, you can decide if you want to keep writing hand emails and doing phone calls and doing all the stuff over and over and over until you're just done, until you're just cooked. Or if maybe you want to just document the process and let something like Kartra automate it and you go on vacation and all things are good, you come back and everybody's still happy because they're all still getting communicated with. They're all still getting, you know, touched and nurtured and moved through the system. So that's really what I like about, about Kartra. So anyway, hopefully that, that, uh, gives you guys kind of a, a reason why you might want to consider it. Not needed, it's not necessary, but if you're only doing this with a handful of people and you're not building a list, then, you know, like in John's case, I don't know, he probably doesn't need it at this point. But if you're going to scale up, if you're gonna go out, you're gonna start do, doing marketing, you're gonna start bringing in new prospects, you're going to start scaling up business. That's when, you know, you might want to make that consideration of how much it's, how much time it's going to take. Like for me, my core value is freedom. So when I look at anything I can do to save time, to give me my time back, I've known for a very long time, I can make more money. Making more money is not an issue. I can't get more time though. That's my thing. I'll fight to the end to keep my time. Uh, Carolyn, yeah, go ahead. I just, just unmuted you. Um, I have a question for you. Um, I have a need to put in about 15 cold emails uh, or contacts. And well, I have a need to mail them with okay. a video. And I want to track the video. Well, I'd like to track the open rate and I'd also like to track the video. To okay. see how much they've watched. Can I do that with Kartra? Absolutely. Okay, yep. great. With Kartra, you can upload your videos into Kartra and it will keep track of them. It will it will give you stats for how long people are watching on average. You can actually get that data right from the specific user too. 
Like you can say if, if a person comes in and let's say they opt in for a, a free lead magnet or something and you're going to send them a video. Mm -hmm. It knows, Kartra knows if they open the email and if they don't open the email, it can send an automated reminder of, hey, you know, your emails, your, your video is waiting for you. You opted in for it. Here's the benefits you'll get out of it. Uh, here's a link in case you misplaced it. You know, you, uh, the one thing, though, these are cold emails, so they didn't opt in. Is okay. that a problem? No, no, it's still, it's still not a problem. One thing I can tell you about Kartra, though, if you're putting... If you're putting cold emails into Kartra, that's not a good idea. Right. So what you want to do is you want to send the email from your regular email. Uh-huh. And then you want to give them a way to opt in to see that video. Uh, okay. Okay. That's the right way to do it. Because if they're not opted into Kartra, Kartra has no way to track them. Right. So your email should, should, pump up the value of watching the video and then for them to watch the video they click the link you send them to a landing page in Kartra that has an opt-in to watch the video mm -hmm. that's what I would do that's kind of the sequence and then when they do that so if you have a way to check your open rates you know in your regular email you could do that you can't really do that in Kartra until they opt in. When they become a lead inside a Kartra, then you can see everything. Mm -hmm. Right. But until okay. you get them in there, uh, it depends on what email software you're using, if it will give you that data, like open rates and stuff. Well, I've been looking at that. The, um, the way, the only way I think well, the only way I found, let's put it that way, is to have a Gmail account or G Suite account actually, and to use this program called Streak. Okay. And it will, um, it, you know, you can email cold contacts, then it will um, let you know that they opened the email. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so that's a way. That's a way to know on the front end if they've done it. And then I guess if they don't open it, do you have any automated way to send them a follow-up with the link again? Um, or is it all manual in the G Suite? Well, I don't, uh, you know, I don't know. Um, well, with G Suite, it would be manual. Okay. That's so the idea is to get them into Kartra as quick as possible. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, but you know, I also want to keep them watching the video more than I want to scare them off by having to opt in. Gotcha. Okay. So, well, there's what you might want to do is create something prior to the video, like something, something that you can give them of high value, you know, create some sort of a lead magnet for them to get them to opt in and then give them the video as a bonus. Cause that's something that people really like when they, when you have something they want and you offer it to them for free and you know, they put their email in and they get it and then you give it to them and you say, Oh, by the way, I have something else also I'd love to give you that will give you even more value. Uh -huh. that, that is like, there's a lot of, there's a lot to that. There's a multiple touch involved. There's multiple communications. They're getting to know you. They're getting to know that you care about them. You're, you know, you're, you're creating multiple touches and you're, you're just, you're creating trust and rapport by doing that. Right. Okay. They're, they're going to like you a lot more if you give them more than you promise. If you over deliver on your experience and you're really providing them good value, that's gonna make them wanna work with you. So that's gonna make them want the next step. What I always try and do, like in the ACT program, we talk about the timeline. If you are really in tune with where they are and what their issues are, what they're going through, and then their desired outcome on the other end, what they really want, the best lead magnet that you can give them is how to take the first step towards that. 
is if you, if you give them a, a little free thing, a small actionable thing, even if it's just knowledge, it could be like, you know, if you're going to buy this thing, uh, there's a couple of things you need to know before you make that decision or before you make that purchase. Uh, and I have that in a free PDF, you know, it's, I, I'll just give it to you. Mm -hmm. That's just education. Right. If they don't, if they don't know that stuff, that that's probably going to be pretty important to them of, Hey, you know, I, I need to know this before I take this journey. So you become part of the beginning of their, their learning process. Mm -hmm. That allows you to, to educate them through the process of what they need, why they need it, how they need it, and that you are the best solution for them. That's a really good position to put yourself into. Mm -hmm. And the only way that you can do that is by opening up communication. So just sending them a, a video to get them to watch doesn't really do that. It might give them good, good information and good value, but mm -hmm. uh, it, it just, it doesn't really get you into the, into that process. Well, it is a tailored video for them. So oh, okay. Specifically to their, some, some issue that they have. Okay, so this is this is like a personalized video. Correct. Oh, uh, gotcha. Okay. Right. Okay. So, um, and I can track the, um, you know, it's created with Loom, and uh, Loom okay. actually does track if they watched it or not. Okay. So I but, can get the information, but it's all in these other systems. Okay, I was gonna say. Uh, Gary Howarth, who's one of our members here, he actually has a system for custom video communication like that. It's oh, called, yeah? It's called Vaxus Hub. Uh -huh. And his site is vaxushub.com. If you want to take a look at it, it might be, might be a good option for you for custom video. He does it for sales uh, salespeople. Uh, <clears throat> is it okay with cold email? Yeah, mm -hmm. oh, okay. yeah it, it's like something that a, a salesperson could get. Like, let's say they get a prospect and they're going to, they're just going to send them a one on one email instead of typing it. They just talk and it records and it sends them like a video voicemail. Right. Okay. And then it, I'm pretty sure that it tracks all of that stuff too. So that's V A X I S H U B? It's, uh, V A X I S, Vaxis. Okay. V A X I S and then Hub, H U B. Okay, great. All right, good. Thank you. So yeah, you might might check that out. Uh, but but Kartra, if you know, once you get them beyond that, and right. you know, it, Kartra, you probably wouldn't be that great for those one-off videos. I think Gary's system, the Vaxis Hub, is sounds like it's it's built for exactly that okay so that might be a good solution as far as that goes but uh, but you can see you know the the process even if you're doing it personal one on one like that getting them into your database is really really critical for ongoing right right because you know it's it's great to do the personal videos i mean that that is really awesome and it's highly highly effective too when you're talking specifically to that person, I mean, chances of them turning it off, not very likely, you know, especially if it's not long, you know, if this is like a 30, 60, 90 second video, that's, Absolutely. You know, right. they're, they're not going to, they're not going to turn it off. <laughs> I mean, if they do, then you don't want that person anyway. <laughs> right. Right. But getting them, you know, that's great to begin with. But maybe during the video, maybe you tell them what you have for them, then get them to opt in. Right. That's what I was thinking uh, as an, uh, you know, as a call to action. Yeah. Yeah. That, that actually sounds like a really good idea. And then have them opt into your, uh, you know, if it's not Kartra, whatever you're using for your autoresponder. Right. But, well, I did get Kartra, so I'm using Kartra. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's an amazing program. I mean, literally, I, I just don't know what I would do without it at this point. <laughs> I 
I'm using it like all the time and I've made more sales, you know, just in the last six months than I probably have in the last couple of years because of Kartra. Wow. That's great. It's literally just given me access to do what I've always wanted to do. Uh -huh. Because cool. before, before, you know, every time I wanted to do a sale and, and all that, I'd have to do everything manually and, you know, piece everything mm -hmm. together. And now I just go in and go, oh, let me just send this message to this group and here's a page and boom, it's done. <laughs> all right. So, cool. cool. Cool stuff. Okay. Rich, so, uh, another uh, question. You oh, were saying on the training that about the website and um, a lot of people forward to the URLs, like you create a page or a site in Kartra and then you can just forward it, uh, forward that URL to that uh, Kartra site. Yeah. If you, if you, create there's there's a lot of different ways to do that but what if you like want to create a landing page inside a Kartra and then you buy uh -huh. a specific URL that's like laser targeted for that offer right a lot of people will do that because if they're on a, a radio interview or something they don't want to give some long funky address and right. they, they don't want to have to have the person go to their website and then try and find the landing page so what you do is you can create a landing page in Kartra and then you buy a domain that's specific to the offer and you just forward the domain right to that URL. Okay. That's a really clean, easy way to do it. And if the landing page is on your own site, like you can, you can put Kartra elements into a website. Like if you have a WordPress site, and you want to put a Kartra opt-in box, you don't have to make a Kartra landing page specifically. You could make the landing page in WordPress and just put the Kartra opt-in box in the WordPress page. Mm -hmm. But what this does for you is this, when you, when you forward all those URLs to your domain, it puts all that authority onto your domain instead of splitting it into putting some into the Kartra pages and some into your domain, oh, okay. it can give you more SEO value to your own home domain. Uh -huh. So okay. that, that's a big help. The more traffic you can drive, whether it's through, you know, landing pages or paid traffic or, or anything, all those visitors onto your site add up for SEO value, especially okay. if they're having a good user experience. Uh-huh. Okay. You don't want to drive a bunch of people to your site that's not relevant so they hit it and bounce off because that's not good. That sounds a bad sign. Uh -huh. but, but if your site doesn't have much traffic, Google kind of looks at that as why should I send my visitors there because no one else is doing that. Right. Okay. So it's if they see a site that's got a bunch of traffic and people are coming in from social media and they're coming in direct and they're, they're coming in from all these different sources. Google kind of has the FOMO. It, it doesn't want to miss out. It wants mm -hmm. to get in on it. It's like, Oh, that site's good. That site's valuable. We should send our people there. Have you done any studies uh, like making a complete site in Kartra and seeing, you know, and optimizing it for SEO and seeing how it does? in um you know does it do better or than like a wordpress site or oh, a wordpress site is much easier to optimize than a cartridge page okay the cartridge page you know it's it's a it's built on someone else's system so you don't really have access to the html code and all that kind of stuff and the other thing is the the cartridge pages seem to load a little bit slower which is, you know, it's okay for a landing page, but for a website, now you want your site to load like lightning fast. Right. There is a, I've heard that there's a new update to Google that um, like it will actually, if it's not loading fast enough, it will discount it, I guess. Oh yeah. Or, yeah. That, that's been going on for quite some time. Yeah. Okay. And, 
And one of the reasons is it's not necessarily because the site loads slow. What Google looks at more than that is it looks at how do users interact with it. And a lot of, a lot of searches are done on mobile devices now. So when a mobile device pulls your site up and your site doesn't load, the person doesn't wait. They just click the back button and they go somewhere else. And Google sees that. So you would think Karcha, though, would work on doing it faster. They are. They, they absolutely are. They're just not quite there yet. Okay. So All eventually, right. if they can get that, if they can get over that one little hurdle, then there's no reason not to. Originally, I actually rebuilt my entire website in Kartra because mm -hmm. I was I was just going to use Kartra and then when I realized the pages were running slower and it was starting to affect my search rankings I was like oh god you know that's it it was almost too good to be true <laughs> so there's that one little piece so I went back to WordPress and then I just pulled the Kartra elements into WordPress and it, it it's real easy to do that Okay. And there's so many people that support WordPress from an SEO perspective. There's so many modules and everything that they just make doing anything in WordPress so easy nowadays. Right, right, right. Probably, you know, if I were to give a recommendation, I would say build the site in WordPress, use Kartra for all your back end marketing, and just put the plugins and in, into WordPress and away you go. Okay. So um the uh your hosting company also makes a difference in terms of how fast it loads, right? Yes, absolutely. Do you have uh, a recommendation for a hosting company? Well, I've been, I have actually had a hosting company since about 1995. We have all our own servers. We do hosting for hundreds of clients. Oh yeah, so you do have a recommendation. <laughs> so I yeah, yeah, obviously I recommend mine, but there's there's a lot of there's a lot of good hosts out there. What I wouldn't do is I wouldn't go to one of these cheap hosting companies that sells hosting for four dollars a month. Uh-huh. They, they you can't do real reliable hosting for four dollars a month unless you pile a million sites on a server and it just slows it down to a crawl. And that's, right. that's what they do. They don't support it. They don't give you all the stuff they tell you that you're going to get. And it's just, you know, it's just a mess. A lot of those sites were made by internet marketers. And that's another thing. You don't want to be on a server that's got a bunch of internet marketers on it that are doing, you know, the, the traditional internet marketer stuff. Like they buy one hosting site and they put, you know, 50 or 100 add-on domains, so they have 100 websites running off of one hosting account. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that taxes right. the server. <laughs> and they do it for four bucks, you know, so they think it's great. Right, but then your yeah. site is super slow. Yeah, but I'm not, you know, I do a lot of commercial hosting for, you know, big companies and stuff, and and they don't want that. They They want you know, real reliable, robust, they pay a little bit more for it, but you know, it's worth it. Uh-huh. So what's the name of your company? Internet Dominators. Oh, and the hosting company too? Yeah, we have, we have a hosting division. We've got a web development oh, okay. division. Um, we, we do a lot of stuff. We offer a lot of commercial services. Uh, you guys know me, you know, from the training in the internet marketing space, but I've been in this for, you know, since about 1995, and I started actually in hosting. <clears throat> hosting and web development was where I got my start, and then into SEO, and, you know, I did commercial services for years before I moved over into training and helping people get online and do their thing. But another thing about hosting, too, I want to tell you is WordPress specifically is a big drain on a server. It's a resource hog. And cPanel hosted servers are not really ideal for it. And that's what most people have. Most people have the cPanel servers or Plesk. And those, those operating systems are not optimized to serve WordPress pages fast. And if they take the server and they tweak it and they optimize it for WordPress, 
then all the rest of the type of sites on the server will suffer badly. So they don't do that. They kind of, they set their servers up to host anything. And it's, they're not really optimized for anything because of that. So uh -huh. we, we have cPanel servers for those that are not on WordPress. We'll put anybody that's not on WordPress on a cPanel server that's highly optimized. And then all of the WordPress sites, we put them on highly optimized WordPress servers that are not running cPanel. So it's, uh -huh. it's very specific installs that we do. And we don't put a bunch of people on any one server. And we don't allow them to have multiple sites under the same account. It's one account, one WordPress site. Okay. And then do you, um, so uh, do you have some kind of dashboard or whatever that you can control, like the cPanel type stuff? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very similar. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Okay, Rich, okay, Rich. All right. I want to keep going on the, uh, I got a bunch of questions here that I didn't have before she came on. <laughs> but I remember <clears throat> there was a time where I was using host nine because I was looking at doing a bunch of lead gen sites, in which case host nine was the one uh, company that would allow you, you could actually get different IP addresses, even though you only had one account. So uh, it was important to you know, generate all those. That does not sound like that's important anymore. Am, am I correct in that? No, not really. I mean, the whole idea of creating blog networks and, and doing all that stuff anymore is, is kind of out the window, really. I mean, not to say that blog networks don't work anymore because Good incoming links do work, but the traditional blog network where, where, you know, it was just a matter of how many different sites on different servers and different IPs can I get to send me links, those days are kind of gone. Oh, no, this was, this was more for lead generation, so I didn't want it to look like I was one company that had 50 sites all looking for roofing you know, generating leads for roofing kind of stuff. I wanted each one to look like it was a, a bunch of different sites doing it. So it didn't just look like it was one guy trying to pile on. And, <laughs> and, and so yeah. that, that doesn't look like that. That's quite so much. So, uh, but I do see a situation where there's a legitimate reason for multiple products or multiple whatever needing more than one URL or more than one website. It sounds like the way that you're setting yours up is if I want to have six websites, I got to have six accounts with you. Is that what I'm Correct. hearing? Correct. Okay. Yeah. So if you're doing, if you're doing it like a, a business website, my way is the way to go. If you're doing what you're talking about and you need like a bunch of different, you know, websites under one thing and they're not really going to be active. They're not really websites. They're just, you know, lead gen pages or something under different domains. Then, no, I'm sorry. the lead gen pages are gone now. I am talking about legitimate websites for specific products. For yeah. Specific so, things. So, so what ideally now you want to, you want to boil it down to one website and the, you know, you don't want a whole bunch of different websites trying to do one thing because a few minutes ago I was kind of talking about that getting all of your traffic coming into one domain because it gives that domain additional authority. If you okay. split them, you basically have, you know, it's like a boat with one engine or two engines. Two engines is twice the cost, twice the problems, twice the maintenance, twice the everything. It's, it could be considered twice as reliable because if you only have one and it goes out, then you're sitting dead in the water. But here, I mean, websites just don't go out if they're on reliable servers and maintained right. You got backup copies. That's not a, not an issue. So you're not going to have a problem with, with overloading your servers and getting a million hits and having one of your servers blow up because it can't handle volume and stuff like that. I'm sure you've got that part handled. Yeah. Yeah. All of our servers are load balanced so they could take a massive hit and not skip a beat. So that's, 
you know, those days are gone too. The technology of with load balancing now is not a problem. But what you want to do, here's the ideal scenario, is to kind of architect out all of your online stuff. Like figure out, you know, if it, if it all truly fits under one hood, that's, that's perfect. Like for marketing, for instance, like for me, I do web hosting. So I have web hosting pages on my site. I do web development. So I have web development pages on my site. Now, before, if I had a different website for that, what I would do is I would just take that domain and I would forward it now to the master page for that section. So all the traffic is going, it's all landing on one domain. It could be coming in from multiple directions, but Google sees all the visitors on this one site and it rewards it for that. It says, oh, if there's that many people on that site, then we should probably send our traffic there too. So if you're doing a situation like you used to, where you're doing your hosting and your SEO and your phishing tackle, because I know that was one thing that you were doing for a while and all that sort of stuff, mm -hmm. rather than having different websites, am I hearing you say basically you're going to have one website and now you're going to basically use silos for each yes. of those things underneath that? So now you're going to silo your website to do it a little bit differently, but it's now you're, you're still working with a siloed site. Correct. With each of those yeah. things for each and, of those. And one thing you want to keep in mind too is make sure that the silos are all relevantly connected. Like for instance, if if I were if I were to fire up a phishing site right now, that would justify me getting another hosting account. Because phishing doesn't really fit into my marketing stuff. <laughs> okay. Well that, that was the that's the question I'm asking. So you're saying yeah. So if you're, if if you're doing that much, yeah, if you're doing a completely unrelated thing and you're trying to get Google to recognize you for a, a particular subject matter, then you want to be specific to that subject matter. You don't want to okay. go completely off the, off the range. Okay. Okay. So that, that's, that's was, cause one of the, the <clears throat> this whole hosting thing is the one thing I'm looking at right now, cause if I'm going to get things going, what I do not want to be is in the situation where my skill not level is not one where I feel like you say, okay, well, this isn't working, so I'll build this whole new website here, and then I'll build out a website here. Oh, this isn't working well, so I'll build out another web. You know, I, I'd like to find, you know, kind of like the right place to land the first time, so I'm not yeah. looking at rebuilding. And if I'm hearing you correctly, uh, it sounds like uh, what I thought is, and this sounds like it, this is a misunderstanding in my part is I thought Kartra equaled like WordPress in terms of you chose a WordPress site or a Kartra site. And now what I'm hearing you say though is what you want is like a WordPress site and Kartra is a plugin for your WordPress site. Correct. Yeah, that's the way I would do it currently, the way things are. WordPress is so much more versatile as far as third-party plugins to get any kind of functionality that you want. And Kartra is, is like a magic carpet ride of marketing, you know, like landing pages, opt-in pages, lead magnet delivery, membership sites, all of that stuff that you do in marketing, Kartra just really fills the bill for it. I get, okay. So that, that was my big thing because I, the, there was a, yeah. And, and this is another kind of little nuance to this that has come up a couple of times in the last few weeks. Somebody asked me if Kartra was perfect for a shopping cart. And it's not. Yep. Kartra is good for sales. It's good for selling marketing. It's good for selling membership, uh, recurring fees, SaaS software, where it's kind of one-off type of purchases. Awesome for that. If you have a commerce site, and let's say people are going to be adding stuff to their shopping basket and then checking out, that's not what it's made for. It's, it's not made for that. If, you, if that's the thing, if you need a commerce type site, you might be better off to go with something like Shopify. Shopify is made for commerce. It's, it's got a lot of made for marketing stuff built right into it. 
So mm -hmm. if you were in that situation, I would probably say uh, Shopify would be a better solution for you than, than Kartra and WordPress, for sure. So how do you mix all these things together or do you? Or do you have to set them up separately? Because there are aspects. I do want to have a membership component, but there's definitely going to be a shopping cart component to it. And Well, is, a, is it a sales component or a shopping cart? A shopping cart is like where you go through a store and you add things to the basket and then you check out at the end with a bunch of stuff. That, well, I certainly would like to, I, at least at this point, I think I would like to have that capability. Although, okay. yeah, you do, you do want to get people to the thing and you do, you may even have one or two main products, but you know, if you go over here and you want to get some bling for whatever it is that, adds on to whatever it is you know to whatever product is you're selling you will need a shopping cart yeah for that. Like, like let me give you an example of the of kind of the difference between e-commerce versus okay. marketing perfect in, in e-commerce basically look at that as a as a store like you go into the drugstore or you go into the the supermarket it's a store you got all these aisles and you got thousands of things to purchase and you might just buy a whole bunch of stuff while you're in there. Random, just stuff. That's shopping. That's a shopping right. experience. Now with marketing, what we're doing with marketing is we're following a, a very, a very streamlined protocol to sell somebody something with the intent of selling them more, but not at the same time necessarily. We're going to solve one problem, then we're going to solve another problem, and we're going to basically create a lifetime value out of the customer. So we're not trying to get them to fill a shopping basket. We're trying to sell them one specific thing. We're trying to get them to take one action. Like a landing page isn't, hey, you know, here's 50 things to choose from. A landing page is one decision. It's one thing. Okay. And that, that's where Cartridge shines. Now, Kartra, you can have upsells in there. Like when they add something to their basket, it can make a recommendation to add on a sale. But it's not like, you know, okay, let's go back and continue to shop in the store. It's not that. Okay. And so you could, you could set up 50 different products and, and keep sending offers out to the different products. You could sell 50 different things to one person throughout this marketing campaign. But it's it's you see how it's different than the, the shopping basket. So how does that get set up differently though? Are you talking about di or now different URLs? One for the shopping cart and one for the cart for the for the uh, WordPress site that that has the Katra plugins and that sort of thing. So you're looking like and you are looking at multiple URLs at that point is what I'm hearing a description of it. Am I hearing that correctly? Well, you can, you can do it. It's very versatile. With Kartra, you have Kartra landing pages on a, either a Kartra domain or you can have a custom domain inside Kartra. So that's one set of domain URLs. You've got your WordPress site that's got a set of URLs under that domain. You can use just 100% exclusively your WordPress URLs for all of your stuff. And then you just pull the, the Kartra modules in, like the opt-in boxes, all of that. Or you can mix them. I mix them myself. I've got my, I've got them mixed. So it's, but when I mix them. You've got I, a big brain and you know how to do that. So. <laughs> here, here's the way I mix them to make it look all congruent. <laughs> With Kartra, what I did is I set up a subdomain of my internetdominators.com. So internetdominators.com is my main site, my main domain, my WordPress site. It's all under internetdominators.com. With Kartra, I set up a subdomain that's dominators.internetdominators.com. So instead of the www, I just created a www that was called dominators. So all of my Kartra pages now ride under dominators.internetdominators.com. You could create anything you wanted. You could say, you know, marketing.yourdomain.com. You could say billing.domainyear.com. You could set up anything you want as far as a subdomain. And then you can have 
all of your Kartra pages populated under that domain. That's what I did. That way they all look like they're all under the Internet Dominator's hood, but I've got specific Kartra pages and I've got WordPress pages and they're all blended together just like they're made to be there. Well, it's pretty clear now why people pay thousands of dollars to have people build websites for them. <laughs> Guess what you're... <laughs> it's really not that complicated. It's, it, it might sound, it's like anything else, you know, we're not comfortable with things we're not familiar with. Of and, course. Uh, but it, once, once it's like in place, it's really a pretty simple, simple system. Okay. And, uh, and John, in answer to your question on Plesk, there's nothing wrong with Plesk. Plesk is a, you know, it, it's something just like cPanel. It's been around. Actually, I think Plesk has been around longer than cPanel. And here's something that there's in the hosting industry. Like I'm in that business. In that business right now, there is kind of a shift away from cPanel because cPanel now is charging by the seat license, not by the server. Used to, you'd buy one cPanel license for your server and you could put all the, all the hosting accounts you wanted under that one server. They have now come back, January 1st, they started their new pricing structure and new licensing. Now you buy a license for a server and you pay for all of the installs like if you've got 50 accounts, you have 50 cPanel server accounts that you're actually having to pay for now. Sounds like they put a gun to their own head. Uh, yeah, that's what I was thinking. I mean, for it's not very much. It's not a big price tag. You know, they charge like a couple bucks each. But if you think about that, what that does to the $4 hosting, it adds another dollar of cost or a couple dollars of cost into it so it just you know it's killing yeah the, the one that one of the things that i was really the, the that you're really and and hopefully and what i'm hoping is you can get this last little uh shadow of question i have here with the, with the kartra and uh because what i was looking at is uh the kartra uh click funnels which i realize now if you you click funnels is just a a, a uh, an affiliate program has kind of gone on steroids and is is yeah, Click, yeah. what Net. ClickFunnels yeah. was is ClickFunnels is a really good landing page builder that was marketed like there was no tomorrow. Yes, that's uh, the Russell was good at that. I will say that, yeah. but, but to hear I did not real <clears throat> realize that that the Kartra was essentially uh, a good. Kajabi 2.0 because I did not like the the original Kajabi was nice when they went to Kajabi 2.0 I didn't think that was an upgrade I thought they went backwards a little bit with some of the stuff that they offered on that but yeah. then I heard heard that the people that <clears throat> did a uh, Kartra were also uh, included in that team were the webinar jam guys so yeah. webinar jam is all built into that in terms of compatibility and all that sort of thing. Yeah, it's all, the, it's all the same, the same <clears throat> team built Kajabi, Kartra, Webinar Jam, Evergreen Webinar. It's all the same development team that built all of them. And it seems to me that Webinar Jam and Evan, Webinar Jam Evergreen is like right up there with sliced bread in terms of <laughs> uh, webinar marketing and all that sort of stuff yeah, i don't yeah, they, i'm not going across a better one unless you have come across no, one better, no better. that's it i mean they, these guys are marketers they do it they live it they breathe it they they build the stuff for themselves and we, we get the benefit <laughs> well my one last question here which was actually going to be my one first only question so we got got off stray here but the, the one the my initial question was I've heard the, the the first new rumors of the new next hot thing, and uh, I didn't know it existed. Everybody knows about Google and Google AdWords and, you know, marketing using paid marketing through Google. I had not heard of Google Shop, Google Shopping. 
Mm -hmm. uh, they're, trying to, they're, they're trying to get their fingers into everything. <laughs> what, if anything, you, what, if you, what do you know, if anything, about that? Because they're saying, because what I'm beginning to, a little rumors I'm hearing is that that is really the, going to be the new up and coming thing is because it's actually cheaper and it's a higher quality click. Yeah, I don't I don't really know much specifically about it yet, but you know, it's like Google's getting into everything. They got into the the Google wallet for the pay, you know, they they're really positioned to do well in that market. But, you know, there's so many people that are entrenched in other systems. I think, you know, having them jump if they're I don't I don't think they're going to get as much traction as they might think. If you look at they tried to get into social media too with their G plus and it didn't go over like they thought. They thought they were going to jump in and scoop the market and it didn't happen and now it's gone. So mm -hmm. you will have to just wait and see. You know, I, I think it's probably going to be another G plus where they just got into something that wasn't their deal and <clears throat> They got out of their lane and they got crushed. <laughs> wow. they, just, okay. they just silently kind of went away. Now I could be totally wrong with that, but we'll have to just kind of wait and see what happens with it. I wouldn't put, <clears throat> I wouldn't get too hasty about jumping in, you know, right out of the gate. Okay. Well, that's what I, that's what I was saying is that you're you've got you don't have your finger on your pulse. You've got your arm up there, wherever place that needs to be to know exactly what's going on everywhere so if you don't really yeah. are yeah. not on top of google shop or google store or whatever that is then that's got to be something that's really new at this point so well um, greg, greg young says it's been around for more than two years which i, I think that's right because i've i've seen it you know popping up but it it hasn't you know I, like i said i don't really know much about it i don't know what kind of splash it's made. I know they're, they're putting Google shopping stuff in the, in the carousels and things like that. But, uh, but I, I haven't heard it like becoming like a mainstream type of thing. Okay. Well, I'll be checking back with you as time goes on to see <laughs> what more you've discovered. About yeah. That. That, that might be more the place in, in commerce, you know, when you get into commerce and they might have a, a good tie, a good database of customers and stuff like that. But I'm not really all that familiar with it to tell you the truth. I, I, I don't do a lot of commerce stuff anymore. And the ones that I do, uh, they're all in uh, Shopify. They're all using that platform. Okay. I must, but being up here in the mountains got a little bit of a hinky connection sometimes, although they've got us on fiber optic now. So can you imagine I'm 25 megabyte per second fiber optic and I'm 25 miles up a mountain outside of town? I feel pretty fortunate, but I did miss that uh, when that I'm the, the, the young lady that was talking about sending short, brief emails. I'm, I kind of missed what it the topic was that she was talking about, and I couldn't get the name of what it was that she was using to accomplish what that was. Could you kind of give me a brief recap on what she was talking about? Oh, yeah, she was using uh, G Suite, G Suite and Loom for making the videos and then sending them out as a personalized video email. And uh, and then I told her about Vaxus Hub, which is uh, one of our one of our ACT members uh, created that system, which it's, a, you know, it's an automated system for sending video, personalized video email. So anyway, guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up for today. Um, I got another thing I got to run to, but uh, thank you all for being on here. Great questions and uh, come on back. We'll be back on here next week at uh, regular time. So have a great week, everybody, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you, John. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye.